Good morning. Welcome to Wednesday Morning Podcast. So glad you're here with us. We are working our way through the Minor Prophets. We're in the book of Hosea this morning, chapter 4. And so before we begin, let's pray and just say, Lord, thank you, God, that you are so faithful to us. Thank you, Lord, that um, we just have this time, a little bit of time in the morning to to come and just absorb your word and to, to understand your nature and your love for us, God. So I pray that you would just bless our time together this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. So we're going through the book of Hosea, and and we've gone through chapter 3. Remember last week as we were finishing up, you know, God gave a a prophecy yet fulfilled, if you will, that the kingdom of the throne of Israel is still uninhabited to this day. Um, yes, they are in the land, but no, they do not have a king. The king is coming, and the king is coming soon. And he will set up his throne and his kingdom in Jerusalem. But then as we move into chapter 4, everything kind of changes. This is kind of a... Um, trial situation, if you will. Hosea changes from prophet to prosecutor, to the prosecuting attorney. Now, the district attorney, the boss of all of them, is, of course, God, and and the accused, rightly so, is the northern kingdom of Israel. Remember, that's where Hosea is prophesying to the northern kingdom as it was a split nation at that point. But here's the indictment, verse 1 of chapter 4. Hear the word of the Lord, O children of Israel, for the Lord has a controversy with the inhabitants of the land. There is no faithfulness or steadfast love and no knowledge of God in the land. There is swearing, lying, murder, stealing, committing adultery. They break all bounds and and bloodshed follows bloodshed. So that is a pretty ravishing indictment. In fact, five of the Ten Commandments are listed as being broken in that in that particular verse alone. And and they are, but they're not sins of omission. They're sins of commission. They are intending to do these things. And that's why the Lord is holding them to account at this point. And it goes on in, in verse 3 and says, Therefore the land mourns, and all who dwell in the land languish, and also the beasts of the field and the birds of the heavens, and even the fish of the sea are taken away. Yet let no one contend and let no one accuse, for with you is my contention, O priest. You shall stumble by day, the prophets shall stumble with you by night, and I will destroy your mother. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, because you have rejected knowledge. I reject you from being a priest to me me. And since you have forgotten the law of your God, I also will forget your children. Now that all sounds super ominous, and it really is, because, you know, God is a very patient, very long-suffering God. But, but, you know, he's only going to let his people sin for so long, and then he's going to step in and do something. This is all the prelude to the capture of the northern tribe by the Assyrians. But look at that. The people are destroyed destroyed because of lack of knowledge. They're not pressing into God. They're not learning of the things of God. The lead, there is no leadership in the northern tribe of Israel, either from the priests or from the king. The priests are, are, are in it for gain. The king, they have no interest in the things of God. There's corrupt leadership, no knowledge of the things of the Lord. And then let's quickly close out with this, starting in verse 7. The more they increase, the more they send against me. I will change their glory into shame. They feed on the sin of my people, and they are greedy for their iniquity. And it shall be like people, like priests. I will punish them for their ways and repay them for their deeds. They shall eat, but not be satisfied. They shall play the whore, but not multiply, because they have forsaken the Lord to to cherish whoredom, wine, new wine, which take away the understanding. People inquire of a piece of wood, and their walking staff gives them oracles, for the spirit of whoredom has led them astray, and they have left their God to play the whore. Idolatry. 
your daughters, your men. They're, they're, there's no leadership. Your men are not leaders. This is the indictment for the Assyrian captivity. It's like, you guys are chasing after everything in the world but me. And God will not have that. What is the first commandment? You shall have no other gods before me. And he says in there very plainly, I am a jealous God. I pray for us that we press into our God, that we put those idols aside and we just, we just praise and worship the one who does so deserves all of that from us. Let's pray and say, Lord, thank you, God, as we go throughout a day, we have the ability within us and we constantly fall short of your glory, Lord. We mess up, but you have provided a way to the cross for repentance, for renewal, for refreshing of our spirit. And I pray for all those tuning in this morning that, God, there would be those things renewal, refreshing in their spirit. As they press into you, Lord, you always, always respond. And so, God, just bless our day as we go. In Jesus' name, amen.